Hello, everybody. We are doing Meridian and Solar. And Juan, can you tell me more about longitude and latitude? Please? Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk about longitude first. And longitude runs between the North Pole and South Pole. So we have here the North, we have the, the line going to the North Pole all the way down to the South Pole. Also the, also the zero, the zero degree line is known as a prime, is known as a prime meridian, which runs from Greenwich, England, it runs from Greenwich, England. So as you can see, um, England here, up here. Um, actually, we have a picture right here. So you can see Greenwich, England, the zero degree line is going through it. Um, the meridian, the meridian, um, the meridian, the meridian west prime is measured in degrees west, and the east prime is measured in degrees east. What does that mean? The the meridian. Yeah. So the meridian is basically the. Well, I know what a meridian is. What What are you talking about? East and, and degrees east. Degrees east. Yeah. What does that mean? So as we. Um, so any. Uh, no. Nope. East of what? Go ahead, keep going. So say that I'm talking about the east. What does that mean? Oh, the east? I know what east means. What is... Which way is it turning? Let's start there. It's turning this... Um, the, um, so where's your zero point? Yeah, you're right. Where's the zero point? The zero point is where it goes through England right here. Uh-huh. So this will be the zero point. And then which way does it rotate? It rotates to the east side. So if I say, uh, show me 10 degrees east, where, where, which way would you go? I would go this way. Okay. Yes. So now I'm going to talk about the latitude. The latitude runs perpendicular from, from the longitude, so it runs from west to east. Um, also, the the zero degree value of the latitude is basically the equator line. So as you can see, the red line here is the middle of it. This red line goes all the way through. This is called the equator line. Also, latitude, um, latitudes are referred as the parallel lines. Our, our, our parallel lines um, are parallel to each other. And now, Dundo, can you tell us more about longitude and latitude? Sure, thank you, Juan. Now, let me give you guys a brief history lesson about latitude and longitude. Quick note, I will probably say L and L because it's kind of long to say longitude and latitude over and over again. So starting off, the idea of using longitude and latitude as coordinates was first thought up around 3rd century BC by a Greek mathematician named Eratosthenes. But it wasn't actually implemented at his time because he was pretty ahead of his time. Uh, he didn't have the tools to utilize it properly. So around 190 to 120 BC, that was when it was first actually used to, uh, that was when uh, a Greek astronomer named Hipparchus actually used latitude and longitude to determine coordinates. Pretty, uh, not, not that specific, but it, it was, you know, it was pretty crazy for his time. Uh, over the years, a lot of astronomers and great minds have utilized and uh, improved on the idea of longitude and latitude. One of these being, in 1530, a uh, Dutch mathematician named Gemma Frisius, who actually used the idea of using an accurate clock in order to determine longitude to in, uh, in the sea or desert, anywhere like deep where you can't see uh, land anymore. And this idea of using an accurate clock was actually brought up by the Greek astronomer uh, Hipparchus, he, but during his time he didn't have an accurate clock to utilize, so he wasn't able to improve on that idea. Uh, another uh, mathematician in Italy actually was six, uh, Giovanni Cassini in 1667, who used Jupiter's moons in order to determine longitude and latitude to map the world. Now this idea was brought up by Galileo, he brought it to the king, but they kind of thought he was crazy, so that, 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 that idea didn't actually go anywhere after that. 
well, you know, Giovanni seeing the potential of this idea, improved on it and utilized it in order to map the world. He brought it to his king, and that's how that's how I think uh, the map of the world first started. It wasn't very accurate, but you know, to the first time it was pretty cool. Now today we map nitrogen latitude. We don't actually have to do anything. We don't have to look at the stars. We don't have to look at the sun. We can use a GPS system, a worldwide navigation system that utilizes the 24 satellites in our atmosphere as reference points in order to uh, calculate our exact point. Uh, these satellites are called stars because they're kind of like stars that the old astronomers use, except they're fake, so they're like fake stars, but you know, who cares about that? Now, a quick fun fact. There is a line opposite of the prime meridian called the International Date Line, running from the North Pole to the South Pole. Now, the International Date Line kind of uh, starts one uh, starts uh, no differentiates one calendar day to the other calendar day. So when you're crossing the international date line, it's kind of like almost having a new sunrise. Whoa! Did somebody say sunrise? I did. <laughs> oh, so I'm here to tell you about the sunrise. Ah, <laughs> sunrise. Okay, so um, okay, so a simple definition: the sunrise is the moment the upper limb of the sun crosses the horizon. When you, so you can see it. It can also refer to the, um, eh, it can also refer to the entire process of the crossing of the disk as well as the atmospheric effects that happen with it. And so a sunset is literally the, yeah, a sunset <laughs> is literally the opposite. <laughs> It's, um, it is the disappearance of the disk below the horizon. Um, but again, it can also refer to the, the process of the disk crossing the horizon and the accompanying atmospheric effects. But one other thing. What's in between a sunset and a sunrise? We have noon. Yeah. <laughs> also called a local apparent, apparent local solar noon. Something like that. Um, this is when the subsolar point, <laughs> sorry, this is when a subsolar, at any given point on the Earth, this is when, a, when the local solar point, a, a, a subsolar point hat is on top of the meridian. Um, so, a subsolar point, that's a new word. Why don't we pass it over to Anna? We'll tell you more about subsolar points. Why, well, thank you, Lula, mm -hmm. for um, telling about subsolar point. What is subsolar point, by the way? That, that's a good question. Uh, what is South Solar Point? Oh, well, thank you for asking me. So, South Solar Point is basically when the sun is perpendicular to its surface. So, when the sun is up all the way on the top at the zenith point, it's like right above an object. So, I'll explain and show you a picture later. But it's where the point on Earth is directly underneath the sun. So let me show you my picture. And basically, when the sun is right over the object, it looks animated or photoshopped. And it only happens in one place in America, the US, which is in Hawaii. And Lahaina Noon. Lahaina Noon is where the sun rays are hitting that object. And hitting the object, and you see this, basically. We have an interactive, and it's basically, we're gonna give some of you guys a marker. Yeah. So, you can, I'll just give it to some, and you can just stand up on your desk. We're actually gonna turn the lights on. Yeah, sure. What's the desk? So I guess like just check this out guys. Oh, so we're gonna you need to pull out your phones. Yeah. Well, you can just see this, it's fine. As you can see, when when the spot, when the light is right over the pen, sorry, the shadows get small and smaller and, and eventually they disappear. Much like behind a new. Yeah, you want to be mm -hmm. flash that up high for 
So this so this simulates the sun being directly over um, an area. The sun, yes. So this the lights are on right now, so it's kind of you see like multiple shadows, but it's yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So does anybody have any questions? Yes. Any questions about oh, Chris? So simulating turning on the lights, that was kind of like a representation of having multiple suns. Exactly. There would be a behind the moon if there were multiple suns. No. There would not be. There, shadows would still be cast cool. because there are multiple uh, light sources. <coughs> yes. uh, is there, uh, anyone can answer, is there a reason why the zero meridian is in England and not like Asia or Africa or like um, so, good so uh, the, uh, like originally, when I was talking about the Greek astronomer Hipparchus, he wanted the zero prime meridian to be in Rhode. Uh, I think that's in Germany somewhere. But I I, uh, I didn't go too into detail with my research, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly why it was determined to be in Greenwich. But I'm pretty sure that's something that just the you know, masses decided. It's because the it's because the guy invented it. Oh. The guy who invented it was from the... Uh, I'm getting a no from Rick. <laughs> First, I just want to say you guys have a great presentation. Good job. And I have a question for you too. So you were talking about uh, international line or date for yes. sunrise. So what's that international like date or line actually specifies? Yeah. Okay, so international date line, that's pretty much... Uh, it's an imaginary line, so uh, that's on the opposite side of the prime meridian, so the opposite side of Greenwich, England. And Greenwich, uh, right? Yeah, Greenwich. Greenwich, So on the opposite side of the prime meridian, and any time the... <sighs> He's distracting me, sorry. Oh. Uh, what was I saying? That's sorry. right. So the international date line actually separates one calendar day to the next calendar day. So if you were to cross the international date line from our side to the next side, it would be considered you going into a new day. Oh. So you would go from like October 22nd to October 23rd. So this is basically when we're like flying to like maybe some part of the like exactly. east side of the crossing the Okay, got yeah. it. Thank you. Does anything happen when you cross the prime meridian? Uh, I would assume that it has the same effect as the international date line. Because it does not. It does not. It might. It might be wrong. Okay.